Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter. I'm here today to do a little bit of a typing test between two brand new machines that I've just acquired in the past couple of weeks. This first machine is an IBM Selectric 2. It was used in a recent Netflix series called Mindhunter, uh, which is awesome. It says prop on the inside and it was bought in a storehouse in Pittsburgh, which is where they filmed part of that show. And its name right now is Holden because that's the main character's name in the Netflix show. And then on this side in the case, I have a 1930s Underwood Universal Portable Typewriter. His name is Leon. Uh, I put some new typewriter feet on this guy and I put in a black and blue ribbon just to see how it would type, but I really haven't gotten to experiment with either of these machines too much. So today I wanted to type out a poem on both of them, see how long it took me, what the feel of the machines is based on my other typewriter knowledge, and uh, see if there's any inconsistencies in these machines. The poem that I've chosen to type out on these two typewriters to compare them is called This Is Just a Say by William Carlos Williams. So let's get started. Uh, so we're going to try this one out. It does have blue ink. Hopefully that doesn't do any harm to the integrity of this poem. I've already messed up because I'm really bad at spelling. As I was going through typing this, I noticed a couple things. First of all, some of the letters, the tops, are being cut off as they're hitting the paper. So like on the top of the S in say, it happened again on forgive me. I did mess up as I was typing and I missed and so cold, I just put so cold. I didn't want to offend William Carlos Williams. So I went back and actually did X's over that to cross it out and then typed the line correctly afterward. I did like to see how the X's went on there because I use that a lot when I'm writing poetry or writing any other document. I do use that to correct mistakes instead of starting over because it takes too long to start over. And then if you look at the bottom of the paper where I've got the name of the author and then the machine, uh, the capital letters on the blue ribbon setting typed in black anyways. So that was interesting. What I don't like, and this is something I noticed when I first got it, is that when you release the lever to make the, uh, the top kind of move along, it doesn't latch anywhere, even back at the beginning. I don't like this noise. That's something I can probably fix. It just sounds like the rollers underneath are probably a little dry, but if I roll it the opposite way, it doesn't have that problem. So it's only when I roll forward that the backspace key does not always go backwards. Um, that's what I actually had a problem with the first time I typed this poem and I made a mistake is because I hit the backspace to go type over a letter and it typed next to it because it didn't go backspace right away. So next I'm going to play with this Selectric machine. I have never actually typed on a Selectric before. I have typed on other electric typewriters, but I feel like just calling it a Selectric makes it a completely different animal than the ones I've used before. Paper also apparently goes in crooked when you do it improperly, if you're like me. We're just gonna go with it and uh, hope for the best. Already messed up. Oh my gosh. Oh, I've really muffed it. One thing I noticed is the back space goes back two spaces. That might just be my machine messing up. That might be something I can fix. Uh, I didn't catch that on the first line. By the time I went back to the end of the poem where you see his um, life dates, I first typed 1983 and realized I messed up. I backed up and it went two spaces. I was able to catch myself though and fix that so I didn't have to X that out. Um, the space bar sometimes does multiple spaces, and you can see that the spacing on this is really weird. One space is in there some places, like between I and have, but in other places where I hit that space bar, it did multiple spaces. And it's not like I was holding the space bar down longer than I normally was, it just was skipping somewhere in there. So final thoughts on these machines. I think they're totally different experiences. I don't know if you can really compare the experience you have on an IBM Selectric to a portable typewriter. They're designed for different things, obviously. The Selectric is super heavy, heavier than me, and it's meant to stay on desk forever. Portable is meant to take on the train. Um, so they're for different purposes. I like the experience of typing on a manual typewriter because it gets you out of feeling like you're on a computer. 
I, I, it makes you slow down so much just to check your spelling, to check the placement of things, to get the alignment right. And I like the process of having to slow down while I'm working on projects. So I really appreciate that about manual typewriters. But it is interesting to test these two against each other and to see what new toys I have to play with. Um, I'm really excited to get to just test these out more. I am excited to try out more of these colored ribbons for sure. If you guys are interested in more typewriter content, please check back on this YouTube channel. We've got a lot of videos in the works coming up, um, so you guys can definitely check that out. We also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. And uh, I want to remind you guys that you are just my type writer. Okay, we did it.